So the hunger in Little Nightmares, or should I say the hungers, because there are actually a few different types of hunger in the Little Nightmares series, and I want to try and do my best today to explain them. And as always, Little Nightmares is a very abstract series, nothing can really be proven in Little Nightmares, and everything's open to interpretation, so I'm not saying that what I'm going to explain today is 100% confirmed factual, but I am going to try and look at what we can actually see in the game as kind of fact to prove or to explain the different types of hunger that we see, particularly in Little Nightmares 1, but also in the, the series as a whole. So also very quickly, if you like this video, please let me know because this is the first time that I've done an unscripted deep dive explanation, whatever you want to call it. And if you like this, I will make more. Very, very simple. So the hunger in Little Nightmares. There's multiple different types of it and it seems to affect different people differently. Now we don't know if there is just one source of hunger that affects different people in different ways or if there are multiple different types of hunger. I'm kind of leaning towards the latter but let me explain the different types first. So the guests. The guests are probably the best example because they're the most obvious. The guests seem to be affected by some form of hunger that makes them desperate for food. It's not just like a normal hunger. Like I'm a big guy, right? I like food. I like to eat a lot. You can probably tell if you've ever seen my live streams. I like food a lot, but I generally, I eat and when I'm full, I stop eating until I get hungry again. The guests, however, they never seem to really stop needing food. They will just continually just shovel food into their mouths. They don't, they don't even really chew it. They just sort of shovel it in until they pass out. And I assume that if they were to wake up, they would begin again. Although we kind of know that a lot of the guests seem to get chopped up anyway. But the guests, their hunger just never stops. And not only can they not stop eating, but they also seem really desperate to eat six as well. And this one's a really weird one because it's not like they just want to eat anything living because they don't eat each other and they completely ignore the gnomes too. And I mean, I assume that they ignore the staff members as well, because we never we never actually see them interact. But, you know, who serves them the food? So it's not like they just want to eat anything living, but they have a real sort of obsession with trying to eat six. They will drop all the food that they're eating. They will clamber over. Clam, clamber? Is clamber a word? They will climb over each other to try and get to six to eat her. They're, they, they're desperate to eat her, which is really interesting. And it could be that they've, they're so bored of just eating food because they eat so much that they're desperate for a, a new flavor, if you will. And as, as, as harsh as it is to say in that world, maybe, you know, uh, maybe six is a delicacy. I, I don't know, uh, but I assume they would try and eat any of the other children if they could, which is also really interesting when you think about it, that they're already being fed children i guess they just don't know or maybe they do know you know maybe maybe that's one of the draws that brings them to the moor but we also know that the guests are under some sort of spell or trance i mean i know other creators have pointed out that when they enter the moor they're kind of walking in unison and they're chanting as they do but even in the official website it says that the lady is casting a spell over them or it's implied that a spell has been cast over them which might be a metaphorical spell or it could be an actual real life spell because we know the lady has magic so that's the guest hunger that's their hunger well you might think that six is under the same effects of the hunger but she's not she's under a completely different type of hunger let me explain so six isn't hungry like the guests she's not hungry all the time like they are in fact, the whole kitchen segment of the game, Six never eats once. She goes past many different types of food, meat and non-meat, and she doesn't seem to care. She doesn't seem to need to eat them. She's not hungry whatsoever. In fact, there's no option to try and even eat it at all. So her hunger isn't always on like theirs is. Now, secondly, Six goes through these small bouts of hunger. She, she has like little little moments of it where she's really desperately hungry more desperately than the guests as well if you look when she gets hungry she's bent over in pain the guests don't seem to be so hungry that they're in pain although we don't actually necessarily see if they get to that point we see them walking into the moor and then we see them eating we don't really see them away from food so maybe, maybe they could be under the same effect but six is in real pain when she needs to eat and secondly every time she's about to get hungry she starts to cough which to me implies some form of sickness. And we know she had this cough in Little Nightmares 2. And you might just say, well, yeah, you know, she was out in the Pale City with no coat on. Of course, she's going to get a cough. But her cough only appears right before she gets hungry. So these things are definitely linked in some way. So for me, Six has this sickness which causes her hunger and her hunger is more extreme 
than the guest's hunger. And to go one step further with that, Six only seems to be able to satiate her hunger with live food, or there's definitely a clear progression. She eats the bread at the beginning of the game and that's fine, but then she seems to need more and more, but not, not more in quantity. She needs more in substance, if you will. She needs more... I'm trying to say this without getting demonetized on YouTube, but she seems to need to eat more people. She goes from bread to a rat to a gnome, which she eats the gnome instead of the sausage. And then finally she consumes part of the lady. So she seems to be on a progression, whereas the guests, they also seem to be on a progression, but they aren't, they aren't affected in the same way she is. They just seem desperate to eat her, whereas she seems in physical pain. It's like she needs it, whereas they're just really greedy. So already there's two different types of hunger. Now the children in the game aren't affected by the hunger either. We know that they need to eat because we see that in the comics and we see that in Law Nightmares 1. We see the kid with the bread, but he has food and he shares it, which to me implies that he's not under any effects or any crazy hunger effects because if he was, why would he share his food? You know, the guests don't share their food with each other. They seem desperate to eat six and he just gives his food freely to six. So he doesn't seem to be under any effects of hunger. So we could assume that children in this world aren't under the effects of hunger and six only is because she's either sick or because of shadow six, because shadow six appears every time six gets hungry. It happens all the way through Little Nightmares 1 and at the end of Little Nightmares 2, if you've got the hidden ending, six, uh, Shadow 6 appears just before Six gets hungry. So there is definitely a link between Shadow 6 and her hunger, and the children don't seem to have any of this. We never see Mono get hungry. None of the children seem to be hungry. We do, however, see the in the comic, the kid is hungry like he's not eaten for a while, but it's not the same hunger. So we have at least three different types of hunger, but I think there's another type of hunger too. If you look at the game, it was originally gonna be called hunger and the developers changed their mind on that one, which is probably a smart decision because if you go and type in hunger into Google or something, it's probably gonna bring back restaurants in your local area or something stupid like that. So it seems to be a very clever decision, but the idea that the game was gonna be called hunger should tell you that hunger is a very, very important theme in this game. But I don't think it's just hunger as in needing food. I think there's a deeper message, a metaphor, if you will, in the game that not a lot of people talk about. So when I talk about the hunger, I do think that the game is a metaphor for society and for us, you and I, and how we behave and, you know, the darker parts of ourselves. And if we take that as an example, you could go, well, obviously in the Western world, for example, you know, obesity is a huge problem. It's a huge problem in the US and in the UK, for an example. So yeah, okay, we we have a problem with eating too much food and especially eating bad food. But I think it goes deeper than that. I think it goes more towards our need for consumption and a really good example to highlight this is the lady's hunger. Now, there's different types of hunger in real life. There's there's hunger for food, but what about things like power hunger? You know, being hungry for more power. Some people are so, we say they're hungry for power so that they will do anything to get promotion or do anything to get more power for themselves. And I think this is what the lady's hunger is. And if you look at the more, there are pictures around the more that seem to imply that there were multiple ladies or multiple geishas, whatever you want to call them, that used to run the more. And now there's only one. And I think that possibly the lady got rid of all the other ones because she wanted total power. She's power hungry. And when she finally did, she finally completely took over the more and made it her own. She's then kind of stuck. Well, what does she do? You know, she has all the power now. What's her next step? I think that that metaphor there could really relate to society in a lot of ways. You know, there's a lot of people out there that will do anything to get more power. And I think that the developers were trying to kind of mirror our own deepest and darkest sort of behaviors. You know, being very power hungry is often not very good for the people around you, as an example. And I think that when we look at Little Nightmares as a series, the horror or the, the implied horror is in what could be real within you. You know, we look at the Little Nightmares 2 and how they're all addicted to TV shows. And that's scary because you're like, holy crap, I just watched 12 episodes of, I don't know, The Office in a day. And it, it mirrors the darker parts of you, right? So I like that idea a lot. But it's really interesting that in Little Nightmares 1, the theme was hunger. So we have at least four different types of hunger in Little Nightmares 1. And in fact, if you want to go even, even deeper with this, you can go into Little Nightmares 2 
and say that again that they've gone from hunger to consumption consumption of media is kind of similar to consumption of food you know if you consume too much media it's probably going to be bad for you in the same way that consuming too much food is going to be bad for you so there we have it that's that's the hunger in lol nightmares it's not just black and white it's metaphorical but it also has a physical tangible effect on the world and it seems to affect different people differently and although we'll probably never know why this is the best way that i can explain the hunger so let me know if you liked that video if you did i'll do more ones like this let me know down in the comments below do the usual like subscribe i have to say this crap because the algorithm seems to hate me for some reason don't know what i did to offend it but if it could just you know be nice that would be good um yeah let me know thanks very much for watching and i'll see you next time